In 1984, a whole new Cadillac DeVille was launched, dubbed the Cadillac of Tomorrow, and it was significantly different than its predecessor in numerous ways. The most obvious was that the 1985 DeVille represented a shrink-down of the 1984 model, going from an overall length of 221 inches down to 195 inches. The car also lost over 700 pounds, transitioned from body-on-frame construction to unibody construction, and switched from rear-wheel drive to front-wheel drive. Overall, the packaging and the car's philosophy was significantly different on this 1985 DeVille than any Cadillac that preceded it. GM purposefully aimed the car at a more affluent, younger buyer, trying to capture a market that was going more and more toward imports. The program planners believed an overall more efficient package was required to compete against the imports, but one key attribute had to remain, interior roominess. For Cadillac buyers simply would not accept a car that was smaller both on the outside as well as the inside. Ride comfort and an overall clean design were also desirable attributes that the team wanted to place on this all-new 1985 DeVille. From a design standpoint, Wayne Cady's Cadillac Studio went with an extremely clean design theme for the 1985 with very simple body side sections and clean surfaces that exhibited more muted shapes than the Cadillacs of yore. And to give the car a more contemporary feel, a door into roof design complete with one-piece window moldings was employed. This was also the first Cadillac that went through extensive wind tunnel testing to help form its shape. And despite the overall formal roof line, the car actually had quite a good coefficient of drag in the wind tunnel. The assistant chief designer of the 1985 DeVille was John Manoogian, who came to Wayne Cady's Cadillac studio after serving a tour of duty in Oldsmobile, where he and the team designed the 1985 Oldsmobile 98. And it was the best-selling Olds 98 to date. With Wayne and John at the helm in the Cadillac studio, success would be repeated yet again for the 1985 DeVille, which represented the best sales year for the DeVille since 1979. John's career would later culminate in his time as the Cadillac Exterior Studio Design Chief, where he and his team did the second-generation CTS Coupe, Sedan, and Wagon, which were named Car of the Year. Let's listen in as John talks about his time on the 1985 DeVille program and shares with us some of his original artwork. If you enjoy this, be sure to drop a comment in the comment section and thank John for his time on Rare Classic Cars. Well, we're back with John to review some of these sea body sketches and see if this looks familiar. I mean, I mean, quite a handsome car. I mean, this is quite close to the the final DeVille that came out in 85. After, after my stint in Oldsmobile, I was transferred to Cadillac. And this sea body was uh, underway. And I was really enamored with the fuselage, uh, doors up into the roof look. That was so unique at the time, and it really made the car look upscale to me. So uh, this was just a proposal for the taillight workout, but uh, I, I think those cars still resonate as far as a design go. They, they were very clean, unlike Cadillac's previous couple of generations of, right. of C bodies. These cars were, were very, very, uh, not austere, but very, very clean, very straightforward. And to your point, it's the only C body with the door into roof design. Yes, and that was unique to Cadillac. And a, I think a cast one piece molding around the window as well. I believe it was. I, you know, I'm not an expert on that stuff, and I don't really recall uh, at the time. But I, I believe it was a a cast piece. Yeah. It's at least one. It's definitely one piece. I, th I think it might be. It's not like the ninety. I'd have to go the, look at one again, but I, I can't recall. It is. I can't. I can only imagine the scrap rate on oh. the hoops of those. Yeah. I mean, that is a big picture frame. Uh, right. Right. But I mean. Yeah, certainly. Was this was there any discussion here? There's not really. The '85 doesn't have some of those historic Cadillac. I mean, signatures in terms. Not really a, a fin here. Not really the prow on the front of the. Hood. There Very were muted. There were vestiges of the fins, and don't forget, as Cadillac kept evolving, the '59 was the right. extreme, and then each year they kept getting lower and more sedate and, and more integrated into the car. 
when we got here, I, I think the philosophy was you wanted that design element, but you didn't want it so overt that mm. you hit the buyer over the head with it. And so we were experimenting with uh, the offset between the top of the fender and the top of the deck lid, how much is still considered a fin versus not a fin. Mm. But to me, the vertical taillights had to be there. That was a thing that Cadillac owned since 1948 when they did the first uh, vertical tail lamps from the P38 Lightning. Mm. That Cadillac owned vertical taillights. And so, and I know somebody's going to say, well, how about the Seville? That was an outlier. But vertical taillights on the big body Cadillacs was a given as far as I was concerned. No skirted fender on this one in the rear. No. Uh, skirts are very controversial and I I go both ways on that. I, I like skirts. I'm a big fan of the Citroen DS, but there are some cars that maybe just tend to look a little too heavy when you mm. when you skirt this rear rear wheel, but it's very distinctive. And it's it's a upscale uh, trick, if you will, to to telegraph that this is a very clean and elegant uh, design mm. execution. I, I did some limousines for for presidential limousine proposals where we would we would skirt the rear wheel. Of course, that never flew. But you yeah. don't have the French dim backlight here that came later. Uh, that music. came later. Yes, I don't know. I don't probably don't have any sketches of that. But yeah, that came later. I, I always thought it was interesting. They they kept this backlight for one year. Well, there was there was a uh, piece. Yes. That was I think it was composite. I it don't was. know if it was metal. Yeah, it was composite that went around the whole backlight. It looked like a French kind of yes. beautifully executed uh, backlight. It looked very expensive. It's an amazingly you know modern. To your point, I mean I've owned I think three or four of these cars. I think they look really great in the dark colors too. Yes, yes. I mean, I had one that was white, and it doesn't quite pick up. No, you know, but it's a car that really comes alive. Mine was navy blue with a navy blue leather interior, which for whatever reason, '85 they had a one year only interior in the seat stitch oh. pattern. Wow, leather or cloth? Both. It was one year only. It has wow. kind of like this rib design. '86 they changed it to a more poofy. <laughs> Loose cushion. Casket light. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, it was too modern for the Cadillac buyer. Yeah. It didn't have the loose cushion. Right, to... right. Now, this is a totally different style. Uh, this, this was a proposal where it would have been the next generation, maybe, where you would skirt the rear wheel, but you would add a backlight where it wasn't the, the vertical backlight, but you had a, a glass wraparound uh, backlight. So that was just... Just a sketch proposal. And there's some, you can pick up some lines in the next gen, like the 90s era DeVille uh, in here a little bit too. Yes, I, I left Cadillac to go to Saturn in 84, 85. And so the the car that came after that uh, was a little bit influenced by that quarter with the, the skirted rear wheel and then the vertical, mm. vertical taillights. Interesting. Here you've got, like you said, the similar backlight you know, kind of multi non skirted, non -skirted. Right. skirted. Yeah. Wrap around cornering light there. Yes. Yeah. You just crank these things out all day long. Every day. This one's quite close to the final. Uh, here. This yeah, this probably would have been a proposal for the a paint. paint package where you've got the pinstriping ah. around the, the uh, DLO and the lamp. Uh, I added the body side molding and then you'd get special wheels. Uh, Cadillac was really good at marketing uh, those unique packages and special mm. edition options, much like Lincoln did with their designer series after that, where they had famous designers' names. Oh, yeah. Bill the, Blass. Uh, Bill Blass. The, Givenchy. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> That's right. Yes. Uh, yeah. Those were... <laughs> Those were great. GM wanted no part of that. Where's yeah. your blue and tan Bill Blast? I didn't do that. Uh, model here. I didn't. I was gone by. Or the lipstick so, yeah. edition, white <laughs> yes. and red. Right. Yeah, right. I, did, I do see that you've put a body side molding on here, though. Tom, I did. So. I was probably hammered over the head enough times that. Yeah. <laughs> Where's that body side? Molding? Where's that body side molding? <laughs> Here's here you've got the the backlight. Uh, yeah, here here was the idea of of doing the coupe, 
but maybe doing a little more uh, sporty backlight, but mm. still keeping the vertical sail panel. Mm. Yeah, these are so interesting. And the, this, you got a little bit of the 88 style when they redid it. You yes. Kind of a return to this protruding from the body. A little right. Bit, it looks like. And initially, uh, they were flush, and then I thought they should be proud. So right. you had that Cadillac. Very clear and distinct. Vertical look. And this This one... would have been another paint proposal with the pinstripes. Um now I notice here this this area, at least to me, resembles that '92 El Dorado a little bit. In that, there's a, this probably isn't as fast. That, that that '92 El Dorado, which was an awesome car, that they called that the Greyhound, uh, had a much uh, faster profile. But it was sheet metal, so you had a big blind sail there. Right. But yes. Another proposal. Another idea of. Again, maybe changing the back. Like this, this, these were probably proposals for the next generation uh, to get away from the original car because you always have to change them up. And and these are done in the early eighties or uh, this. This would have been between eighty one and eighty five. Oh my goodness! I mean, how uh, super modern for the time, right? Mm -hmm. Contextual. Yeah. And then we were also doing at that same time El Dorado Seville, which were hugely downsized for 86. Right, right. That's a whole nother story. <laughs> here you got the thing. And again, boys. you know, here here I, I made the backlight very, very narrow by, by pulling up the collar uh, of the deck lid so that you had this elegant looking slim backlight. Right. That was why this, this deck lid is higher to yes. kind of give the backlight a more slim look. Correct. It's it's got the collar that's sticking up like this. Yes, I never yeah. thought of that term because it's not it's not in parallel with the belt line. Correct, it's raised. Correct, and you'll notice on all these sketches the belt lines are actually lower than where the upper sits on the body, and so th that was a GM kind of a hallmark where this belt line is actually lower than the fender form front and rear so that you had this feeling of airy, spaciousness, a lot of glass. That was the look. I see here you've got kind of the French den back. Yes, right. yes. Okay. That was that idea of doing that. I had no idea. That's custom. interesting that this was, this deck lid was raised so you get more of the Correct. squished. Wow. Yeah. How interesting. And then these are just some more sketches proposals what you could do for a facelift wow very it is very clean to your i mean looking looking back at some of these it, it's interesting because uh, these plain wheels would never have flown they as a cadillac it had to have wire wheels well it doesn't have to have wire wheels but just some some interest some interest these aren't land speed record cars you don't need Flush, flush wheel covers. I yeah. just picked up. By I don't know what I was thinking, but on this one, this ribbed black molding actually yes. made it through. Uh, it the... did. It did. Yeah. So I, yeah. I just noticed that. That was a unique yeah. touch. It's funny when you see these and you think of the car. You almost, at least for a layperson, things that aren't don't come through on a first read. You realize, oh, you okay. discover them. You right. discover right. them, which is weird. It's like, like Easter eggs, yeah. It is. It's a, you don't you don't necessarily figure it out until somebody explains it. This was the first sketch I did when I went to the Cadillac studio after my Oldsmobile stint, and I said I've got to do a pink Cadillac. So I did. <laughs> I did. This later made its way to the ST, the late eighties STS and uh, Colorado Touring it, Coupe. They it may two, have, yes. They had the three uh, exhausts either side. I think it, it came right. out, but right. huh. yeah, well, that's pretty close to the. That's not far off of the, yeah. where, where it ended. Yeah. Well, again, you know, the car was underway when I got there, so we were doing all the uh, details. The, you know, these were the, supposed to be the backup lights here, ah. which weren't on the final car, and. I had a chrome bezel around the tail lamps that wasn't on the final car, but again, these were just uh, the whole lower is chrome that wasn't on the final car. These are just proposals, ideas. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, Paper's cheap. I was I, I keep recalling this rib theme on the that the eighty six ek the s the Seville had those rib that ribbed lower. Yes, 
that was stamped into the metal. Yes. Remember? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I I always I never looked at it that hard. I would have assumed it was just cladding. You know, because GM would be too cheap to do, but it was yeah, not. Right. Yeah. GM and cladding. Yeah. GM and cladding. Yeah. This would have been a coupe propulsor for a '98 with a, I mean, a a, a C body with a, a skirted rear wheel. And this is how it kind of ended this this opening here. Uh, a little pretty bit, much. Little yes. Squarish. Yes. Well, yeah. let's just kind of give it uh, the pseudo uh, um, skirted look. Or? Yeah. Yeah. Just trying different ideas. And then one last one. One last paint proposal. Oh. Yeah. Again, the pinstripe, and then the matching wheels and. Yeah. Wow. Well, the car, I mean, perhaps more than the 88s and 98s, it seems like the Cadillac ended up maybe a little bit more proximate to what some of the sketches were. Um, what would you say? Yes. I, I'd say, uh, well, and it was because of the timing. When I got to the Cadillac studio, this program was just starting to wind down, and then the Cimarron and the Eldorado Sevilla were just, ramping up and then the two-seater was kind of an offshoot there and you were landing just at the right time it sounds they, like they parachuted me in just at the right time yeah <laughs> yeah under cover of darkness under yeah. cover of darkness yeah i can only thank you um, thank you and i'm sure the the viewers will as well so great thanks again for coming on thanks adam all right take care well, i hope you enjoyed this interview with john as he shared some of his sketches for the 1985 deville if you did, be sure to drop a comment in the comment section and talk about it. And also like and subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, be sure to check out the video thumbnails at bottom left and right. And until next time, thanks again for watching and take care.